this video I'm going to show you how to use lists and for loops to automate the process of changing multiple things at one time. In this example I have six buttons and we're going to change different aspects of them uh, using the loops. We'll head over to blocks where the first thing we'll do is grab a variable. We'll initialize a global variable to buttons. Uh, buttons make sense because we're going to be changing the buttons in this list uh, for other things. Obviously we name it other things. And when we initialize the screen, we're going to create a list of all the buttons that we want to be in this buttons list. In this example, it's going to be all the buttons we have. So I'm going to go to list and I'm going to choose six things. I'm going to make it six items long. One for each button. And then I'm going to go to button one, scroll all the way to the bottom and get button one. And then I'll duplicate that five times to get six different buttons. It's just the fastest way to do it. And this seems like a lot of trouble, but it's most of the effort here. And then you can do a lot of work with a little bit of effort later. Okay, so now we have a list of six buttons. And now we can start doing things. So, for example, if I press the back button at the bottom of the screen, I can choose a for each item in list. And I'll make the list, of course, the buttons. And now we can, you know, do things with that. So I'll go to the any component down here at the bottom and we'll find we'll find set button visible and we'll choose of component to be the item and we'll set visible to false so, so when I press the back button all the buttons are going to become invisible all right um, now I'm going to add another button because once they go invisible I'm not going to be able to see them anymore so let's make another button button 7 and it's not in our list so that'll stay visible and when we click button 7 let's make that so they all become visible again so making buttons visible and invisible is actually a really nice thing to be able to do because we want sometimes to be able to clear the screen of all these different things. This could be a setup thing or some other, something else that we want. And so it's nice to be able to do that. All right, so here we are. If I click button seven, they all appear. So I'd already clicked it before and they disappeared. Okay, so let's try some other things. So now I'm just gonna duplicate that for each loop and I'll put that in the screen initialize. And I'll change the set button visible to be background color. And I'll just go ahead and create a background color because I like to be fancy. And I'll use the HTML color picker in Google. And I'll choose the, uh, the RGB numbers here. And they don't have to be exact. So now when I show my buttons, now they're that color. And I can do that really quickly just by having that list. So if I had to change the color of those buttons otherwise, I'd have to make six individual copies. It's not the end of the world, it's just, you know, a struggle. So here's another example. In this example, I'm going to make a whole list of different balls be randomized in, in various ways. So let's get started with that. Okay, so we'll head over to blocks. And again, we're going to make a new list. I'll name this one balls. And... We'll set it to an empty list, just like before. And now we'll have our screen one initialized. We'll create another list, just like we did before. And we'll put all the, um, the balls into that list. So just like before, we have to add five more items into that list so that we have a list six items long for the six balls. Okay, so now I just head over through the balls, scroll all the way down just like before, and I take ball one, and I copy that through. This is a really handy thing to do in almost any app where you have a lot of customization. Okay, so back to any component, and I'll choose any ball. And so now let's let's randomize some aspects of the ball. So we'll set their heading to be random number. Oh, shoot, I got ahead of myself. I have to go to control and choose my for each item in list again. Set that to be, in this case, the list of balls. And now I can put my heading in there. I'll set the heading to be a random number anywhere from uh, 1 to 360, so we get full rotation. And I'll duplicate that, and we'll make this one speed. All 
I'll make my speed be a random number as well, anywhere from 50 to 300. That might be a little fast. Okay, and finally, let's also change the radius of the balls. And I'll set them to be anywhere from 10 to, I don't know, 40. All right, cool, so let's take a look at that. And, <laughs> oh, that wasn't very good. I do have very different sizes. They all went to the corners, of course, because I didn't put anything to make them bounce. But let's slow them down a little bit as well. So we'll make them go as fast as 100, and we'll make them a little smaller to fit my tiny screen on my emulator. I don't know why I chose 13. And while we're at it, let's also change the paint color. So we'll make them a random paint color too, because I think that would be really neat. Just go to colors and make a color, and I'm going to set each one of those to be a random integer from 0 to 255. Alright, now we'll just set the ball one edge reached to bounce, call bounce. And after I have that all set up, I'll just copy it six more times, make a big ugly pile of uh, bounces. So let's see what that looks like on the emulator. Oh, that was cool. So you can see that we can use these list functions to make many different things change all at the same time and we can make them change in ways that are different from one another and in ways that are the same however we want and so this could happen when we press a, a close button or we want to kind of change some aspect of the screen or almost anything all right Hope you like it.